First post for today on the r slash paranormal encounters subreddit from bop bop a w a o. I asked my daughter to go back to sleep and a man told me no. My ten year old daughter sleep talks. Sometimes she'll even sit up and look around. Last night she dozed off on the couch and fifteen minutes later she sat up and said, Where did it go? I said, It's okay honey, go back to bed. She laid down and asked me again where it went. I said, Go back to sleep. Then I immediately heard a man's voice right in front of me say, No. I looked at my daughter and she was asleep again. My husband was in another part of the house in our bedroom asleep. I'm still shaken. There was a man who passed away in our living room in 2017. There was also a man who shot his wife in the head with a shotgun in 1986 in the driveway across the street. We also live by a cemetery, like next door. Never felt spooked until last night. I haven't slept. The voice was so aggressive. I hate this so much. It was so close and so real. I don't know how else to explain it. Update. I just asked my daughter if she ever has dreams about ghosts or sees ghosts. She said no. I asked if she thought the house was haunted. She said, Well, there are the dimes. I forgot about the dimes. They fall on her. She has so many dimes. We rarely use cash, and she has a reloadable cash card, so we have no idea where they come from. She'll just be in the kitchen, and I'll hear a coin hit the floor, and she'll say, Thanks, Jeff, and put it in her bank in her room. I forgot all about that. I didn't tell her what happened last night. I think it'll terrify her. Edit 2. The dogs. We have three boxer dogs that hurt it too. When I told my husband about what happened, he asked me if that's why the girls woke him up scratching at the bedroom door, trying to get out. They usually all pile in bed with us. I heard them scratching at the door, but not until later. I'd gotten up after my heart calmed down and decided to go pee once more before cashing in for the night. The dogs never do this. They go to bed whenever he goes to bed. Update again! Just now, my daughter said to me, Do you think people can talk to ghosts? Do consider that we went to the new Beetlejuice movie after school yesterday, so that could be related. I said, Anything's possible. My grandpa always said, If someone said they saw this or that, never dismiss it, because you never know. My daughter said, Isn't he the grandpa that worked in the Air Force at Rosewell's, the alien place? I said, Roswell, and yes. She asked, Did he believe in aliens and ghosts? I replied, Oh yeah. He had an author he loved that talked about supernatural encounters. I can't remember his name, but my grandma would say he was crazy when he'd bring up that sort of thing. She said, Well, she wasn't lucky enough to see that sort of stuff. I said, Why do you ask? She said, No, I was just curious. This one's new. I have re-recorded this video, because uh, I thought the audio before was awful. This update is new. Edit again. Jeff was the man who died in our house. He was a nice guy and a family friend. We've always said Jeff jokingly. And we've agreed that if he were to do anything, he's obviously nice, if he's leaving us money. I'm just answering this question a lot. I'm not mad. Just wanted everyone to see this. The voice I heard was forceful and almost angry. Nothing's happened since, and my daughter has seemed unfazed. I've also been sleeping better after a couple of days. Our second post for today to the Paranormal Encounter subreddit is Make Him Leave by Lucky Paradise 808. I'm a registered nurse. In my career of floor nursing, I have many stories, as I'm sure many nurses do. One that comes to mind. It was an older woman that, at the end of the shift, interrupted me while I was checking on her. As she raised her shaky hand, pointing in the direction, she said, Could you please tell him to leave? I turned around, just the empty corner of the room behind me, and said, Who? Dead serious, she responded, Him. Tell him to leave. I don't like him. I thought this was strange. As she wasn't a psych patient, no history of hallucinations, I replied, Ma'am, there is no one there. It's just you and I in the room. She kept staring at the corner. No, there is a man in the corner wearing a dark hood. Tell him to leave. Anyway, I finished my shift and went home. Came back the next week. That patient was no longer in that room. After inquiring from co-workers, I found out she had passed away two days after the night she told me about the man in the hood in her room. I still get chills when I think about it. Another from the r slash paranormal encounters, we have RJ Floyd 85s I work security and had a strange experience tonight. Hey all, I work at a condo complex by the beach. 
I've been here for about three years, and my co-workers, who have been here for ten plus years, always talk about seeing and hearing spooky stuff. To give you some background, I'm a skeptical believer. In the past three years, I never had anything happen that I couldn't debunk. Until tonight. I was on the second floor doing a patrol. I have a radio that I carry with me when there are two of us working. Normally, I'm here by myself, so I don't usually have it on me. While waiting in the lobby of the second floor for the elevator, the radio suddenly kicked on, like someone was trying to talk. I took it out of my pocket and heard a faint little girl voice saying, Can you see me? Can you see me? Twice, followed by, I'm right behind you. My initial thought was that my co-workers were playing a joke on me. I just put the radio back in my pocket. When I got back to the guard shack, I told my coworker that it was a funny prank. He looked at me, and he's not the type to lie, and said he had no clue what I was talking about. So apparently, I had my first paranormal experience. Love to hear your thoughts on this. Update. I spoke to my boss this morning and told him what happened. He wasn't surprised and said it normally happens on the sixth floor. He mentioned that he had seen and heard two little kids running up and down the hallways, and that they have messed with the radio. He asked around, no one knows anything about two kids passing away here. However, this building has been around since 1974, and it was one of the first condos built in the area. For our final posts from r slash paranormal encounters, we have by, however you pronounce that name, correct me in the comments, please. Stull Cemetery in Kansas. Not sure if everyone is familiar with this place, but it is nationally known for being haunted or a gateway to hell. Perhaps lending to the spook of the place is how banal, or average, and normal it seems. There are much spookier-seeming cemeteries in the area, so I've always wondered, if creating a hoax, why this one? I live about an hour away from Stull Cemetery, and I went several times with friends back in high school. Always in the middle of the night. Lots of minor occurrences, like a whoosh past my ear, and shadows. But the worst might be unbelievable to some. On our way there one time, everyone was talking about whether they believed in ghosts or not. Everyone said no, except for me and one other guy. We weren't certain, but said we were open-minded. Spent about 30 minutes poking around in the dark until suddenly, coming from the field behind the cemetery, we heard a scream so visceral it sounded like a pig being slaughtered, or a little kid burned alive. Loud enough it could make you want to cover your ears. The one guy who said he was open-minded and I looked at each other in absolute horror but our friends didn't seem to notice at all. We started freaking out, asking why they couldn't hear it. They thought we were messing with them, and even started laughing. The scream went on for a full minute, it seemed. Did some research on the town when I got home and discovered the story of a little boy who died while his father was burning their field. This experience is something I will often trauma block and even forget to mention when the topic of stall comes up. Maybe I discovered something about the paranormal. Maybe only people who believe or are neutral can really see and hear what's out there. I also have a theory that maybe the haunting and demonic vibes that live there could have a lot more to do with that creepy tree that dangles over the back fence. Whatever it is may predate the town and cemetery. There is something dark about all of eastern Kansas, as if it's a train station for the damned. I grew up there, and the people just aren't right. A few of us figure it out and get away. I moved across the state line to KCMO, and while Kansas City is definitely a spooky place, it feels much safer. Thank you very much to listening to today's narration. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and please suggest what you'd like to hear next. I want to do more long-term content, and I'd really like to hear what you want to see. Please have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.